Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to be looking at announcements from Intel, um, Risk V International, also Nvidia, and and SoftBank Group. Right after this. <laughs> So I guess the first question is, uh, is what's happened here? So let's go through this. So I think the very first thing we've got uh, is that TSMC has, I think they have talked about that they're at capacity on the five nanometer, and we think they're at capacity for the three nanometer as well. And that is throughout 2022, they're occupied producing chips for NVIDIA, Apple, and also Qualcomm. Intel, in the meantime, has been busily ramping up their fabrication services in Arizona. They've also an announced previously a new fab service in Europe. And we'll talk about a new one that was just announced a few days ago. And the reason is, is that they have cloud connectivity, artificial intelligence, and also Edge as places to build new things. They're also developing new packaging technologies, which allows Intel to customize and create multiple architectures uh, within the chipset, say for x86 or ARM or RISC-V. So you have this packaging technology, which is moving from system on a chip to system on a package or SIP, system in a package. And Intel calls it EMIB uh, for, to do this and uh, one of the things that it allows them to do is to uh, customize those those chips using chiplets. I think it's funny that, you know, a few years ago they talked about AMD using glue. And here we are back to chiplets again. But Ponvecchio is the architecture behind it, which allows them to put things, let's say, for example, CPUs, memory, storage, all on the chip. So you don't have all these bus uh, uh, bus movements of data going throughout the system, you have it all contained within the chip. Shorter distances equal greater speed. Also, you have the ability to add other things like you might add an AI accelerator, you might put networking, for example, on that chip. Whatever the customer needs, I mean, basically is what you're doing. You could also put real-time processors on it. Uh, you could mix and match processors that are foreground and background, like on Intel's 12th, uh, 12th gen architecture for their uh, yeah their uh, series of chips. So it comes packaged, but behind that, Intel is not only building this new technology; they're also increasing their fabrication facilities. And the other pro the other problem that you we have today in the industry that Intel will talk about is that most of our manufacturing fabs come out of Asia, and so. That's that's like putting all your eggs in one basket. So if something happens over there, uh, whether it be a, a a global disaster or a war or or flooding or tidal waves from earthquakes, we've or fires, we've seen those kinds of devastating things before that have just completely shut down the industry. So we need to somehow take that capacity to allow like 50% of it's in the U.S., 5% in Europe, 80% over there, and make sure that we have enough capacity to meet the demand no matter what happens throughout the globe. If there's a facility uh, problem in, let's say, the west coast of the U.S. or one that affects Ireland or one that uh, affects Israel, that those shift, that we can ship the fabrication over to other facilities. And they're, they're creating this standalone unit that not only provides fabrication services to themselves, but also fabrication services to fabless uh, chip designers that want to be able to go out and develop chips on their own. This is a fairly expensive thing to do. I mean, to set up your own fabrication facility costs, you know, tens of billions of dollars to create them. Uh, so yeah, there, this is not something that you would just go out and do on, you know, on your own if you were a small company with a great design. Uh, this requires you know, very complex machinery like this one, like the Extreme Ultraviolet Machine, uh, which allows them to uh, produce uh, smaller and smaller chips you know, down to 10 nanometer, 7 nanometer, and on down the line. So currently, you know, the uh, fabrication processes up until now 
and, and the enhanced UV have always used larger uh, units of light. Well, we've been through all of these things where we've kind of migrated from high metal, trigate, strain, silicon designs for the, for the FET. So what do we do now? I mean, how do we get smaller and smaller so that we can get down to three and two? We have to get the light size down. Today it's 193 nanometers. We have to get it down even smaller, which is uh, enhanced ultraviolet, which gets down to about 13.5 nanometers or so. So that allows us to create higher detail resolutions at smaller and smaller scales and allows us to increase the chip density. Along those lines, Intel has also invented the ribbon FET, which does allow for some customization of that FET, uh, depending upon the customer's needs. But the two big things about it is that re it retains power uh, better than the previous designs, so we don't have as much leakage of uh, electrons, for example. And it also provides higher performance. So. If you compare the footprint with the older FinFET, you can see it's about half the size. So yeah, this would get us down from 10 nanometer to 5 nanometer, for example, and they can make it smaller. Uh, they also can widen the FET depending upon the applications, and uh, that I would assume would provide new things. The other thing Intel has done is they have announced a new fab facility they're building in central Ohio. This is a $20 billion investment to create a new manufacturing site, which Intel hasn't done in over 40 years. So yeah, there, this is a ground up uh, facility and those take a while to bring to come online. I mean, they usually about three years uh, to bring a new facility online. It takes a lot of steel. It takes a lot of workers. And, and then once you get it up and, and, and assemble, then you have to fill it with equipment, which is another expense. And you also need trained workers in order to man the facility and in order to, to facilitate building of the chips. One of the other things that Intel announced this uh, past week is that they are going to join the RISC-V International Board as a premier member. I believe that uh, is the first time Intel has ever been expressed interest in RISC-V, other than the fact that they had been looking to produce uh, RISC-V chips in their Fabs a couple of years ago, they were looking at that. But the problem is here is is that, as we said, the TSMC is full. They've also put a billion dollars aside in order to help fund disruptive startups that want to get involved with it. But they've also provided, they're going to be licensing the uh, IP from RISC-V so that they can develop their own. They're also going to be doing a number of other things, uh, such as providing the uh, uh, open source chiplet designs to their uh, partners. Sci5 is signed on with the uh, IFS, in the Intel Foundry Services, and RISC-V is working uh, to bring them to onboard Intel onto their board of, of directors and to help things along. In the meantime, NVIDIA and ARM have terminated their merger. So uh, that uh, will then, Softgate then made the announcement that they will be going out and providing uh, it, ARM as an initial public offering. So I, I don't know when that will take place. They, they, according to the announcement, it'll be sometime in 2022, sometime this year, but we don't know exactly when that'll happen. Of course, that's all subject to regulation. So as to when that actually will take place, and of course, I don't know when that will be happening as well. So. That's all I had for today. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again very soon. Bye for now.